Five reasons you should use heavy arrows with your crossbow. That is this episode of Death by Bungie. <laughs> All right, we are partially moved into the new house here. The trophy room is partially adorned with trophies, you know, things that we've accumulated over the years. And behind me on the wall there, that is actually my 1986 buck that I shot with a rifle. But I think it's only fitting that my first trophy be the first animal that we hang on the wall here at the new house. So. He's already up. The others, we've got some on the floor over there and we have managed to hang up at least one other trophy. So it's a work in progress. This episode of Death by Bungie, Heavy Arrows. Those of you who follow Death by Bungie on Facebook and some of the videos that we did during Crossbow Appreciation Month, some of the videos for the meet and greet, the second ever Death by Bungie meet and greet, we showcased Heavy Arrows. That was one of the themes of Crossbow Appreciation Month this year. Are heavier arrows appropriate for you and your crossbow? I hope to give you some pointers and some tips on that during this video. Don't worry, this video is not going to be full of statistics and facts and figures and all that stuff, the boring stuff. I'm just going to sort of give you an overview because that's the style of Death by Bungie. That's what I do on Death by Bungie, give you sort of an overview of the different concepts. The actual specifics, you have to go out there and you have to tinker with that stuff in the backyard yourself in order to see what works for you and what doesn't. But I do have here a heavy arrow, at least by my standards. It weighs around 528 grains or so. And you can see it also has a great front of center. And what that means is a lot of the weight is up front. There's an insert in here that makes it a little heavier on the front end. This was provided to us from friend of Bungie Marshall, a Spinal Tap arrow. He had these custom made for me and sent me a handful of them. And we used them at the second ever Death by Bungie meet and greet. Bungie and I were successful in taking down a boar in the neighborhood of 350 pounds. It's a bruiser and I did a video about that. You can check it out here on this channel. Now, what's the difference between this arrow, a heavier arrow, and the stock arrow, something I've referred to as stock arrows throughout the history of Death by Bungie? I want to be clear that the vast majority, in fact, almost every animal that you have seen me shoot with Bungie on this YouTube channel has been shot with what I consider, what I refer to as stock arrows, the arrows that are recommended by the manufacturer, the ones that came with the crossbow or the model of arrow that is recommended by the manufacturer to be used with my crossbow. I have in my hands the Excalibur Firebolt. Totally a sufficient arrow. Has a Luminoc installed, which I love, gotta have a Luminoc on there. Has the appropriate veins that Excalibur considers appropriate for the older, slower crossbows using this arrow. So that's where the Firebolt comes from. It's from Easton, it's a totally satisfactory arrow, and I have used arrows like this, taking deer after deer after deer. In fact, I put one of these arrows through nearly a dozen animals, I think. I don't really keep track, but it had been like two or three seasons using the same arrow. So I was like on my third season. So I think I was in a neighborhood of close to a dozen animals with the same arrow. So they are very sturdy. The problem with these arrows is that you buy a dozen of them and you might have four or five out of that group of 12 arrows that shoot the same. So you just fill up your quiver with those four, use those four, everybody's happy. And then when those eventually you've exhausted all of those, then you just fill up your quiver with a different set of arrows. I don't want you to start using heavy arrows just because they're trendy. I don't want you to use heavy arrows just because they're popular on Facebook now and in all the forums and all that good stuff. But I do want to go over some reasons why you might want to move from the manufacturer's stock arrow, the arrow that is appropriate for your crossbow, totally satisfactory for your crossbow, and upgrade or step up to a heavier arrow. Here's five reasons why that might be appropriate for you. The number one reason you might want to step up to a heavier arrow is pass-throughs, penetration. Heavy arrows are all about momentum, all about penetration. Last year, you'll remember here on Death by Bungie, we went to the meet and greet. It took me two of those stock manufacturer's arrows to bring down my wild boar last year at the first ever Death by Bungie meet and greet. I was in the double tap club. Now, Bungie and I, 
We just like taking animals with a crossbow. We like killing animals, putting them in the freezer, hanging them on the wall, all that fun stuff. But being in the double tap club, that's not really what we're going for, if you know what I mean. So improving that, trying to get into the one shot, one kill club was high on the agenda for this year. Enter the heavier arrows. The heavier arrows give you more weight, more momentum when they make impact with the animal. Now, I don't want to get too confusing. Again, this isn't the whole story on heavy arrows, FOC, all that. This is just five tips. FOC, front of center, having that weight up front is a related topic. Now, just because an arrow is a little bit heavier, it can be made out of heavier stock, and that can make an arrow heavier. You can add a heavier broadhead, that can make an arrow heavier. Having the inserts, putting the weight up front, another way to make the arrow heavier overall. Front of center is a related topic because you end up putting a lot more weight up front because that's the easiest place to add it. It's also a good place to add that weight typically because it starts to act as a way of helping the arrow be pulled through the animal after impact. The arrow's momentum helps it enter the animal, but that weight up front starts pulling the rest of the arrow through the animal. That's at least the idea behind it, the theory behind it. Last year, Bungie and I had a banner year. Killed seven deer last year, one of which was a Sika deer, one of which was the largest buck we've ever killed, or the largest buck that I've ever killed. So it was a great year for us. Also had a great year at the meet and greet. I got pass-throughs on most of the animals, even though I was using the stock arrows. To ensure that though, for the meet and greet this year, to get that pass through, heavier arrow, using that spinal tap, using that arrow with the heavier front of center, the, the front loaded arrow, better success this year. That's for sure. Down. Oh, you killed him instantly. Look at the blood pouring out. Now, I'm not sure if that arrow hit a rock on the other side of that big old hog or if it actually hit the shoulder on the opposite side and that's what made it stop. He was laying at sort of a funny angle. But nonetheless, that's a lot of penetration on an animal that weighs like 350 pounds plus. Quick side note, why are pass-throughs important? Well, pass-throughs are important because if you want to kill an animal, you need to make sure that you are killing that animal with blood loss. That is how we kill animals with any archery equipment. That pass-through assures that the arrow doesn't remain behind and clog up that hole, help those wounds start to heal. We don't want that to happen. We don't want clotting to take place. By having the arrow pass through all the way, and I'm not just talking about dragging the arrow along with you, but making sure that that arrow is left on the ground at the scene of the crime, Having the animal run away with two holes gives you a better blood trail, but also helps make sure that those wounds are less likely to heal. Broadhead selection is another important part of penetration, another important part of front of center, heavy arrows, and this whole discussion about penetration. Those are topics we'll be exploring in separate videos down the road. All right, and the second reason that you may want to consider using heavier arrows with your crossbow is accuracy. Now, one of the things I talk about in my book, The Death by Bungie Crossbow Story, Confessions of a Crossbow Hunter, one of the things I talk about in that book is my belief, thanks to a friend of mine, my buddy Scott, that accuracy is number one with crossbow hunting. That's number one. That's what we strive for first and foremost. The ability to put that arrow where you want it to go, that's key. Now, what do heavy arrows have to do with accuracy? Well, it's interesting. A heavier arrow starts to slow down your bow. Speed can get out of control pretty quick, right? A car that's going slow is gonna be easier to keep on the road than a car that's going really, really fast. Now that oversimplifies the whole topic, but nonetheless, I do believe it's true that if you slow down the arrow somewhat, I'm not talking about cutting your speed in half or anything like that, but if you slow down your arrow a little bit, you get a little bit greater amount of control over that arrow. If right now you're hitting quarters at 40 yards, accuracy is not a reason to upgrade your crossbow to heavier arrows. That's a fact. But there might be other reasons. But nonetheless, if accuracy is in question, all of a sudden you're not getting consistent shots out of your arrows, a heavier arrow might take you down the right path. The third reason to consider using heavier arrows with your crossbow, volume and vibration. 
Now, you have seen in the past with episodes of Death by Bungie, me installing all kinds of rubber gizmos on Bungie to sort of reduce the vibration, to dampen the sound. I don't think crossbows are ever going to be quiet. I've made that point over and over. I still believe that to be true. I think quiet is a little bit of an exaggeration, but you can make them a little bit less loud using some of those rubber gizmos. However, the problem with that is you're reducing the speed of your crossbow because that's in effect what reduces the vibration, that energy that the crossbow was going to impart into the arrow and the rest of the excess energy that was going to vibrate away and make those limbs really loud and make all that noise, you're absorbing that with those rubber add-ons. Nothing wrong with that, but it does slow down your crossbow a little bit. In exchange for the slower crossbow, in my case, I went from 300 to 305 feet per second down to around 280 feet per second. That slower crossbow a little bit quieter, but you don't get anything else for that speed reduction. With a heavier arrow, you can go from 300, 305 feet per second down to 280 feet per second, give up that 20 feet per second, but in exchange for that, you get a greater amount of momentum with your arrow, more penetration, and sound dampening. One hundred point one. 100.1. Oh, they're right here. <laughs> they know that we're shooting. Ninety one point four. Again, results may not be typical. Your crossbow rig, your arrow rigs may be different, but nonetheless, I can tell you that there was that much of a sound reduction just using a heavier arrow, in our case, with bungee in the backyard. Reducing that vibration probably helps your crossbow live longer as well. Those limbs don't like vibration. All those nuts and bolts and screws don't like a lot of vibration. Over time, that'll wear out your crossbow. Reducing that vibration with a heavier arrow might help your crossbow live longer. The number four reason that you might want to consider using heavier arrows with your crossbow setup is bigger game. Now, Dr. Ed Ashby, the name that comes up time and time again when you're talking about these heavy arrows, did a lot of experiments with traditional archery equipment, some compound bows on that bigger, slower African game. When you're shooting at water buffaloes and other big animals like that, yeah, a heavier arrow can help because you need that extra penetration. But what does that mean for us as crossbow hunters? If we're chasing elk, if we're chasing moose, right? The moose concept. Does your crossbow moose? That was another topic on the Death by Bungie Facebook page. I've had a lot of fun with that concept. Those different animals are going to require heavy arrows. Those are the animals where you're going to want to look at front of center very closely, look at the arrow weight very closely, and look at your broadhead selection very closely. I can tell you from what limited experience I have shooting big heavy animals that a heavier arrow seems to afford more penetration when you're hunting with your crossbow. Year one, the first ever Death by Bungie meet and greet, that hog that we shot took two shots to bring him down. The heavier arrow made great penetration on a hog that was much, much larger. So it makes a big difference. Now, to be fair, Genevieve and I had been to the Tioga Boar Preserve on two previous occasions, got pass-throughs both times with Bungie, using mechanical broadheads both times, but a smaller cutting diameter mechanical broadhead. We also did not have the sound dampening equipment installed, but we were not using heavy arrows. The number five reason why you might want to consider using heavier arrows for your crossbow setup is protection from a bad shot. Now, I want to put a little asterisk on here, and I want to be careful how I phrase this. Some people have taken it to mean that if you use heavy arrows, that you can shoot bad shots. You can just take bad shots. I have read post after post that I struggle with, I don't like, of uh, people saying, well, I can shoot lengthwise a deer now. I can shoot the deer right up front, the arrow will come out in the back. It'll kill the deer. Maybe, maybe, maybe they offer some protection for bad shots. In other words, if your shot is less than ideal, can this help a little bit because you'll get greater penetration once you hit that shoulder blade that you were trying not to hit? Yeah, I think that that can help. It can help. 
Is it a solution? Does it change the way we hunt as archers, as crossbow hunters? Not to me, it does not. So I don't want people to confuse that. But I am receptive to this concept that with a heavier arrow, there's a little bit more forgiveness. If I make a bad shot, maybe it offers greater penetration and I end up salvaging that shot, finding that deer where I wouldn't have otherwise killed the animal. That's important to me. I'm receptive to that argument because it sounds very similar to the reason why I use a mechanical broadhead, a wide cutting diameter mechanical broadhead. I do that because in my experience in the past, deer that I lost, I kind of think if I had a bigger cutting diameter, I could have made up for what was otherwise not a perfect shot. That deer in Maryland, you can go back and watch that video. I'm off by inches. If I had a larger cutting diameter, would it have made a difference? We'll never know. Once again, I don't think you should just jump on the old heavy arrow train right away. If one of the reasons I've discussed here applies to you and you want to start exploring that, fantastic. Next week's video, here it goes. We're going to get some heat on this one, I know. But next week's video is five reasons why you should not use heavier arrows with your crossbow. That'll be a good one too. I hope you got something out of this video. Until next time, all hail Bungie! Oh. <laughs>